Hillary Clinton is the first woman to win the presidential nomination of a major party. However, she's not the first woman to be nominated for president, or even the first woman to appear on the Democratic ticket. That would be Geraldine Ferraro, who was nominated for vice president in 1984. But who was the first woman to run for president? The first woman to run for president did so nearly 150 years ago. That was Victoria Woodhull of Ohio. She was born in 1838 as Victoria California Claflin. Her mother was an illiterate spiritualist, and her father had been a snake oil salesman. Growing up, she was physically and sexually abused by her father until he was run out of Ohio after trying to commit insurance fraud. At 15, she married a doctor named Canning Woodhull. The two of them would have two children, but not long after the two of them were married, she discovered that Canning was an alcoholic and womanizer. So she divorced him and kept custody of their children, which was very unusual for the time. This is when she became a supporter of what at the time was called free love. However, free love did not mean then what it does now. What she meant by free love was that women should should be able to get married, divorced, and bear children without government interference. She was accused of being a prostitute at one point, but it's unlikely that she was. She openly condemned prostitution, but the publication she ran supported legalized sex work. The closest she came to prostitution was offering the young women who were doing so to collect the money from their patrons. The newspaper she ran printed the first English translation of the Communist Manifesto. Woodhull would go on to become a labor rights activist. It's uncertain whether this activism was motivated by her reading of the Communist Manifesto, or if she printed it because she already held similar views. In 1871, she joined the First International, but was later kicked out along with a large number of other English-speaking Americans, which led to the group's eventual decline. She was a first-wave feminist, and brought these ideas with her to the Equal Rights Party, who nominated her for president, along with abolitionist Frederick Douglass for vice president in 1872. Douglass did not recognize this nomination and continued his support for President Grant. The Equal Rights Party supported civil rights rights for women and minorities, especially the right to vote. Living in New York State, Victoria couldn't even vote in the election that she was running in, which is just as well because her name was only on the ballot of a handful of states, and unsurprisingly, she didn't win. After her second husband died in 1876, she moved to England and became a lecturer. Within her set of beliefs, there was an unusual inconsistency. She supported sex education and many forms of birth control. She was also a supporter of eugenics. However, she was an opponent of abortion which is very unusual, even in her time. This is in contrast to one of her contemporaries, Margaret Sanger, who supported abortion and eugenics. She spent the last 25 years of her life in quiet retirement, dying in 1927 at the age of 88. There are numerous groups and awards named for Victoria Woodhull, including an opera titled Mrs. President. If you want to learn more about political science, then go ahead and click this annotation, or check the cards in the upper right-hand corner for a playlist. Or you can click this annotation for a playlist about other famous people and characters. If you liked this video, then you should subscribe to the channel. If you want to help this channel grow, then share this video and leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.